As Los Angeles hurtles into the future, we imagine its past to have been free of big city heartbreak and crime. Far from it. Fifty years ago, mystery writer Raymond Chandler portrayed a city with more than its share of misery and murder. The streets of Los Angeles, he wrote, were mean streets. Out there in the night of a thousand crimes, people were dying, being maimed, cut by flying glass. People were hungry, sick, bored desperate with loneliness or remorse or fear, angry, cruel, feverish, shaken by sobs. A city no worse than others, a city rich and vigorous and full of pride, a city lost and beaten and full of emptiness. Writing in the 30s and 40s, Raymond Chandler created a vision of Los Angeles as a promised city stained by crime and corruption. And the crooks weren't just in the streets. They had the police department on the take. They called the shots in City Hall. Attorney Grant Cooper was there. Raymond Chandler was right. The city of Los Angeles was, at that time, was as corrupt as any city in the United States, and that includes Chicago. Heaven on earth, soft ocean breezes, an uncomplicated corner of paradise. In 1930, the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, the nation's first, proclaimed the city's delights. The air of prosperity is deceptive, for the stock market had crashed and the city was hard hit. Even the booming oil business was affected. Though for a time, there was money to be made here in Long Beach. The staff of the Dabney Oil Syndicate. In the back row far left, an urbane English-educated executive in his early 40s. Though an excellent administrator, he was a hard drinker. Raymond Chandler. He wrote, it was a good job, so good I couldn't hold it. They tossed me out during the depression. In the city directory, Chandler and his wife listed a new address in Hollywood. Jobless and at loose ends, he listed what he hoped would be a new occupation, writer. He weathered the worst of the depression at the El Pueblo apartments. He later wrote, I went five days without anything to eat but soup once. It didn't kill me, but neither did it increase my love of humanity. Chandler distracted himself reading hard-boiled detective magazines. He found them forceful and honest. And he decided to try his own hand at evoking what he called the smell of fear. For inspiration, he only needed to walk out the door. To Chandler, Los Angeles in the 30s was society gone wrong. In his words, the city was a paradise of fakers.
Behind its placid facade, he saw the place to be populated by dope fiends, smut peddlers, schemers in low places and high, crooked cops and crooked politicians. Though the sun might shine and the warm breezes blow, Los Angeles was haunted by corruption, and not infrequently, death. Death, be it accidental or by design, to Chandler it was the big sleep. In his first full-length novel, Chandler introduced a detective hero intent on doing battle with the vices of Los Angeles. All right, boys, I'm just proving something. In the film version, he's played by Humphrey Bogart, who Chandler felt was the genuine article. Pardon me. Who is he? Philip Marlowe. Over at Arms, Franklin Street. Special license, deputy badge and all. Marlowe could take it, and he could dish it out. Maybe you need this. But I don't like your manners. I don't mind if you don't like my manners. I don't like them myself. They're pretty bad. I grieve over them long winter evenings. People don't talk to me like that. Oh. Say, mister, would you please? But why Philip Marlowe? Wasn't it the role of the police to chase criminals and solve crimes? Where were they? This is just how we're staying laid off. Chandler wrote, the law is where you buy it in this town. This old Los Angeles station house was witness to the state of affairs in the police department in the depths of the depression. Money was scarce. Morals got pushed. For a $50 bribe, you could buy a job as a sergeant. You could be a detective for 125, a captain for 250. The force was under the command of Chief James Davis, Two Gun Davis. In some respects, his men were good, reasonably honest cops. They effectively tracked down major criminals. Vice was another matter. Quite a show was made of raiding brothels and collaring bookies. Roundups made the newsreels. George Howe, alias John Wynn, alias A.E. Stone. Yet they were soon back on the street. Even in the shadow of City Hall, vice flourished. Ace crime reporter for the City News Service, Jake Jacoby, worked the downtown beat. There was about 50 bordellos, probably more. Uh, I wasn't too familiar with them because I didn't inhabit them. But, you, you know, as a newsman, you'd get word, there's one here, there's one there, how come they don't uh, take, take action, this kind of thing. I have issued orders to all members of the police department of this city to bring in every reckless driver, drunken driver... Police Chief Davis. He took a hard line on traffic violations, but he looked the other way when it came to the payoffs made to the police by madams and hundreds of bookies. I would say they're on the take a bit. And uh, there was a, a bookmaking establishment, a large one, right kitty corner from the Hall of Justice. Most of the complaints came from distraught housewives, wives of, uh, uh, of officials and, and sheriffs and policemen who's, uh, who were spending their money at the bookie joints. 